escape. <coughs> Douglas had taken the midnight goods to a station on the other railway. He was shunting, ready for his return journey, when he heard a faint that sounds like an engine, he thought. The hiss came again. This time it sounded almost despairing. Who's there? he asked. A whisper came. Are you a fat controller's engine? Eh, I'm proud of it. Thank goodness. I'm Oliver. We're escaping to your railway, but we've run out of coal and have no more steam. Is it from scrap you're escaping? Yes. Then it's glad I'll be to help ye. But we mourn work fast. Both crews joined in. They took off Oliver's side rods, wrote out transit labels, and chalked scrap everywhere they could. Douglas marshalled Oliver in front of his train. No time to turn round, he panted. A mourn run tender first. Yee-hoo! Yee-hoo! yelled a passing diesel. A steam is escaping! Yee-hoo! Douglas puffed firmly on. Take no notice, he counselled, but they were stopped before they could clear the station's throat. The foreman's lamp shone on Oliver. Ah, he exclaimed, a western engine. His light flickered further back. A western auto coach and goods brake too. You can't take these. Can we? No, said Douglas's driver. They're all for us. See for yourself. Douglas's guard showed him the labels and papers. Oliver's crew, hiding in the coach, hardly dared to breathe. Seems in order, said the foreman, grudgingly. But it's queer. Sure and it is, began the guard. But I could tell you queerer. So could I, interrupted the foreman. Right away, guard. A near thing, puffed Douglas with relief. We've had worse, smiled Oliver. We ran at night. Friendly signalmen would pass us from box to box when no trains were about. We got on well till Control heard about a mystery train. Then they tried to hunt us down. What did you do? A signalman let us hide on an old quarry branch. Driver, farmer and guard blocked the cutting with rubbish and levered one of the approach rails away. We stayed there for days, with diesels baying and growling like hounds outside. I was very frightened then. Small blame to ye said Douglas feelingly. Presently they rumbled over the bridge and on to the fat controller's railway. We're home. They can't catch you new. Tell Isabel and Toad, please. Douglas called out the news and heard a joyful tingling, tingling, tingling. He was surprised. Oliver chuckled. That's Isabel, he said. There's a bell on her, you see. She's clever. When we go out together, I pull one way and push the other. When I pull, I can see ahead. When I push, I can't. So Isabel keeps a good lookout and rings her bell to talk to me. Did you know, say? Douglas was impressed. About this dude, he continued. Is he? Who do you wish? said his driver. Yon's the works. We won't slip in unbeknownst and find a place for Oliver. Douglas tried hard to be quiet, but the night foreman heard them and had to be told their secret. I know just the place, he said, and showed them an empty siding, nicely hidden away. Oliver said goodbye and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. Yon's an enterprising engine, he thought. I won away here with Donald, but I'd have been feared to do it on my own.